My dear students, as today we are going to start the first poem of our main book Flamingo, My Mother at 66. I want you all to sit with a pen, a notebook, and if possible also a pencil, so that you can write down the important points as and when required. So let us start the poem My Mother at 66, written by Kamala Das. Kamala Das was born in 1934, as it is already given in your textbook, you can have a look at there. And she died in 2009, that information is not there in your textbook. So 1934 to 2009, she was alive. And important thing to be known about Kamala Das is that, Kamala Das was her maiden name. Her maiden name was Kamala Sureya. S-U-R-A-Y-Y-A. -Y -Y -A. Her, ma her maiden name before her marriage, she was Kamala Suraya. And her mother's name was Balamani Suraya. And Balamani Suraya will be an important character for us because she is supposed to be the main poetic persona in the poem, My Mother at 66. Kamala does born in 1934 and she was married at the age of 15, 1, 5, to a person called Madhavandas and thereby she becoming Kamaladas. And if we look at Kamaladas's career, literary career, we can come to the conclusion that she has started her writing career only after her marriage. But looking at her various poems, for example, the old playhouse, the looking glass. It's a common popular belief, that she must have a very terrible domestic life, or terrible married life, personally. But in contrast to this common popular belief, in fact, she had a very contented married life, and her husband, Madhavan Das, was an inspiring char character, an inspiring personality in her life. And she established herself as a poet. Uh, and the due credit goes to Madhavan Das. Kamala Das, is, uh, you will find it very interesting to note that Kamala Das used to use the single table for two purposes. During the daytime, she used to, during the evening time, even for evening meal, she used to cut the vegetables on that particular table. After the nightfall, when the entire family slept, she started typing her writing, typing her uh, poems or other writings on the same table. So that shows her dedication and that shows the duality of her character, the duality of the personality she was having. And coming to the poem, My Mother at 66, before going to the poem, we must know one more thing, that uh, Madhavandas was there, and her pen name, the, under the names, it is given in the textbook, in your, about the poet part, you can have a look there. It is given there, her pen name was Madhavi Kutti. It is given in the, on the blackboard also. It's, she is, her pen name was Madhavi Kutti. And uh, coming to the, and uh, if you talk about different, different uh, uh, various stages of her life, one important stage to be mentioned before beginning the poem, that important area is the, she, she uh, towards the end of, towards the latter part of her married life, Kamala Das had, uh, ex had an extramarital affair with a man called Sadiq Ali. S A D I Q, Ali A L I, who is seven to eight years junior to her, and due to her associations with Sadiq Ali, she became Muslim in 1999, 1999. And this particular aspect of this particular aspect of becoming Mus Muslim has a indirect connection with the word Friday we are going to encounter in the poem. 
Friday. And secondly, we are going to encounter the expression airport security check. So these three things are somehow interconnected. We'll go to the we'll go to that particular area later. And let me start with you at now the the text of my mother at 66. Coming to the title first. This poem is ma about my mother. And the my mother, since the word my is there, it's a personal pronoun is there, we can come to the conclusion that she must be Kamala Das's mother. That is Balamani Sureya. And Balamani Sureya at that point of time must, must be a woman of 66 when this poem was written. So that means totally a personal kind of experience on the part of the poet. And so, this is, you can write down, you can write down there on your notebook, it's a subjective poem, subjective poem, because it's dealing with the mother, Balamani, Amma. Coming to the textbook of the poem, text of the poem, the very first part, driving from my parents' home to Kochi last Friday morning, this part, these three lines are very informative for us, telling us about the situation of the poem. The first word, let me tell you, the first word driving is in a sense grammatically wrong. But, but since we all of us almost more or less know that poets or the writers have the license, what we call poetic license. They are allowed to do certain grammatical mistakes. And we'll come, come to this issue again, once again, but for the time being, Kamala Das is going, probably in a car, from her parents' home to Kochi, Kochi airport. She must have spent some time with her mother, and she's already married. And she is going to Kochi International Airport in order to go to probably Singapore. Why Singapore? Because as known from her biography, as known from different biographical, uh, biographical anecdotes, uh, we, can, we, may, we may say that uh, Kamala Das has the experience of visiting three countries of the world. He visit, she visited Germany once, Jamaica once, and Singapore twice or thrice, because Adhavandas used to work there, her husband. So this time probably she is going to Singapore from Kochi airport. And uh, as she is going to Kochi airport, the day of, the day of their journey was Friday. Why Friday? Not Saturday or Thursday. That's totally a different kind of question. We'll come to that. For the time being, the day of the journey was Friday. Time of the journey was morning. So during morning time, they are going to Kochi Airport to Malabar, to Kochi Airport from Malabar, and the distance from their locality Malabar to Kochi Airport is a distance of, if I'm not wrong, 14 kilometers, 13 to 14 kilometers. So in order to cross over that particular distance, they are going in a car. And as the daughter is leaving the country, the mother has gone to see her off at the airport. So accordingly, they are moving on, going in a car. And as they're going in a car, Kamala Das was sitting along with the mother. If Kamala Das is sitting along with the mother, the question is, there must be someone else driving the car. And if someone else is driving the car, the word driving is somehow confusing. Towards the end of this video, we will come to that particular question. And as she was going along with the mother, the mother is sitting in the, sitting alongside her. The sentence here is, I saw my mother beside me. Beside Kamala Das, mother was sitting. What she was doing, what the mother was doing? Those, those means lightly sleeping. Silmiliya tukuni feeling drowsy, open-mouthed, 
it's a very common phenomenon in case of old people that their mouth used to get open, slightly open sometime without their awareness when they go for sleeping unknowingly. Very common phenomenon. And similarly, the mother's mouth is also getting half opened. Open mouthed, the expression is used there. And her face ashen. The face, mother's face has somehow lost its brightness and has taken ashen color. Ashen color taken and these three informations we are getting about the mother's description from the mother's description. Mother was dozing, sleeping, almost in a sleeping, feeling drowsy. Mouth is getting open. Third thing, mother's face is ashen. Get, taking ash color, that means very pale, losing its ch normal charm, charm and vividness. Brightness is lost. Mother's face is said to be ashen in color. Point to be noted here is the word ashen. Because as the custom of the among the Hindu people, when the dead body is burned on the pyre, the ultimately the human body turns into ash. And from the ashen color, we have the sense of death cropping up in the poem on the surface level. This sense of death is aggravated by the next part, ashen like death of a corpse. Corpse means dead body. And dead body, after with the passage of time, dead body used to get discolored. And the mother's face is compared to the face of the dead body. Please, my dear students, do not do the mistake of considering that the mother is compared, mother's face is compared to dead body. No. Mother's face is not compared to the dead body. Mother's face is compared to the face of the dead body. Therefore, the word e death is there. T H A T, that is the death of a corpse. In the entire poem, you will know where you will find the word like death, or word like sense of death, or word like dying in the poem. Kotonai, nowhere. But very interestingly, in the entire poem, in the entire poem, the sense of death, sense of death is somehow lurking in the poem, lurking. It's an important point, word for you to understand the poem better. And is lurking in the poem, the sense of death somewhere. The word death is not apparent in the literal sense. But the word death here is working as a leap motif. Please note the word on your notebook. It's working as leap motif. Mittur dharana tui ta onto holilad gori ata kaam gori ase. But the word death is nowhere there. But the sense of death is brought into the poem thanks to the intelligence and thanks to the uh, symbolism, uh, symboli symbolism of the poet that she is using the word corpse. Also using the word ashen. And that means he has observed the mother, found to be sleepy, mouth is getting open, unaware she is about those things, and her face has lost its usual brightness. At any time, the mother may die. Do not forget, the mother is already 66. The mother Accompanying the, accompanying the daughter to the airport, no doubt about that. But the same mother may not be able to accompany the daughter in the next time. Observing the mother up to that part, the poet is now about to realize a fact about human psychology. And do not forget, you can go back to the previous part about the poet. 
in the if about the poet part it is written the poet is dealing with the complex subtleties of human relationship subtleties means hidden ideas certain things we cannot express in front of others because of various reasons because of practical practicality because the practical dim because of certain practical demands because see the mother is accompanying the daughter the daughter is realizing that the my mother may die at any point of time but that doesn't mean that she will start crying she cannot do that because that is not demanded that is not required in that particular situation she has to hold her emotion back but she realized something look at the textbook realized to it pain you can add one i there i realized to it pain that my mother she looked as she was as old as she looked as old as she looked for certain couple for couple of days she was there in the mother's house no doubt she has observed the mother no she has yes just 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 observe the mother casually but today at the penultimate moment of farewell she is observing the mother minutely and now she can realize that the mother in the actual sense of the term is getting old she is not looking old apparently she is really getting old and all the physical features all her bodily postures are reflective of her old old age of her senility she is realizing that it is a painful realization on the part of the poet that my mother may at any point of time my mother is really getting old up to this part we can have a pause there considering the fact that up to this area we have two technical things to be understood before going ahead two technical things to be understood technical thing number 1 in the in this part up to the part we have already covered right that there is a contrast in the poem contrast in the poem contrast means opposition boiporitto contrast in the poem what kind of contrast time was the the, the time of the journey was morning and during morning time it is expected of all to remain fresh to remain active but unfortunately as observed by the poet kamla das her mother is no more active her mother's appearance is lazy one lazy mother is lazy lethargic passive inactive that means this is a contrast that during morning time the mother is feeling inactive something uncommon in case of young people or people with energy and vigor mother is not like that anymore the so one contrast in the poem used in used here one technicality another technicality you can find in this part itself we have the example of simile comparison between two things upama one hand we have the face of the mother the word like is there mother's face is like the face of a dead body this word like tells us it's a simile working here the simile the similarity the comparison is between the mother's face and the face of the right these are the technical it is we have we have already come across here up to this area why it is friday why not thursday that's a different discussion altogether so the poet is now pained poet is grieved and jab and when we are too much tormented by certain pain certain sadness some form of melancholy commonly we have the habit of we have the habit of postponing it somehow therefore the poet is also doing almost the same thing 
look at the next line as old as she look but soon put that thought away the poet is putting something away we have the cup we have the tea cup in front of us suppose from this place from this table you are putting the tea cup away to that table put away displacement displacement but if you are only displacing the item you are not eliminating the item altogether putting away is only a temporary kind of displacement please note this so what she is putting away she is putting away that thought which kind of thought the thought about the painful read that, that this the thought is the thought of mother's imminent death in order to put the thought away what she is doing she is looking outside the car's window what she is finding outside the car looked out at young trees sprinting young trees sprinting and maybe children spilling out of their homes two images note these are two images one is young trees sprinting it's a very common physical phenomenon that whenever a car will be moving forward it appears that the trees are moving backward very common physical phenomenon all of you has the more or less the knowledge about this so uh, trees young trees are sprinting it looks to be sprinting backward and another image another thing she has observed is some children are spilling out of their homes spilling out is getting spread right if you are spilling some water on the ground from a water bottle it will be spread in the, into different directions the children are also spreading to different directions probably if my assumption goes right probably they are playing hide and seek and they are coming from a coming from a coming through a single door and spraying in different directions as a result it appears to be spilling out of their homes why these two images what are its inherent connections are their inherent connections with the theme of the poem why did the poet look outside in order to put the thought away they looked outside the poet looked outside in order to put the painful thought away in order to can also write down you can in order to ventilate out her emotion right because she was suffocating inside the car let me let me look outside i'll find something interesting something something more vivid what she has observed first she has observed the young trees secondly she is observing some children playing hide and seek these two images are totally again a contrast with the senile condition of the mother why so see da it's a matter of contrast suppose see suppose i am i am uh, wearing a white color pant with a yellow color shirt my look will not be that prominent my fashion will not be that acceptable but if i am wearing that particular i am wearing a yellow shirt with a black trouser it will look good why because it's a contrast in the same in the poem also in order to make the mother's oldness more effective the poet is using certain images which is totally opposite to the mother's condition how opposite see young trees sprinting trees are sprinting back side young trees is the mother young no. old mother sincere students will find it very intriguing to discover that young trees look at the textbook young trees you have the y n t capital why we we'll think about it i'll i'll explain you later for the timing young trees sprinting mother is not young can the mother sprint can the mother run 
no, not possible, mother is lazy, lethargic, one image gone. Second image, merry children, merry means happy, elated, delighted children. Is the mother happy? Cannot be happy because of our physical condition, because of our old age and more specifically because her daughter is going away to, going away abroad. She cannot be happy. So one hand we have the merry children, other hand we have the not so happy mother. Can the mother spill out like the children? No, not possible. So these two contrasts is in a di indirect way, in, its, in their own turn, helping us to understand, helping us to internalize that painful realization about the mother's old condition even more effectively. It's, because it's a kind of emphasis, indirect kind of emphasis created by the image upon the condition of the mother. Right? So they are going and up to this part, we have come to that, that particular area. And then, it's a time of almost arrival at the airport. But after the airport security, security check, standing a few years away, I looked again at her. Airport security check is, literally speaking, is a very common kind of, common kind of formality to be conducted in the, at the airport. Very common, common kind of practice. So after the baggage are dropped, so definitely the people will, will face the security check. And you should understand or you should try to understand one particular fact. The security check here is a point of no return. From security check, the mother, the daughter, even if, even if she likes, she cannot come back. That is her ultimate point of no return. Standing a few years away, so that now the mother is no more bodily attached with the daughter. They are going away from each other. Moments before, in the car, they were together, close to each other. But now, they are going away from each other. Standing a few years away, I looked again at her. Standing a few years away has a philosophical connotation also. Let me remember, let me tell you one important thing. In order to understand this philosophical connotation, I can give you one, one personal anecdote from my own life. Uh, that time uh, I was in Delhi and I went to watch the movie Rangde Basanti in the Sangam Cinema Hall. And uh, because due to the lack of uh, scarcity of money or something, I got the front seat very near to the screen. I can still remember the moment when the movie started. At the beginning, I could observe only the, only the lower part, only the legs below the knee of Amir Khan. What does it mean? It means in order to have the full body, full image of Amir Khan, I must go backward. I must have a distance. So sometimes what happened? In order to understand a reality of certain thing, in order to understand the reality comprehensively, fully, completely, you must be away from that particular object. Moments before, the boy was standing, sitting beside the mother. They were close to each other. And she was unable to accept the fact of mother's imminent death. Now, after airport security check, now she can realize that, yes, this is an acceptable fact. You have to accept this. And see, look, and I looked again at her. You can ignore this fact also, but you cannot actually. Look at the word ignore, sorry, look at the word again. I looked again at her. See, I am taking this class, same day, suppose we, I have another class. So when you look me, when you will find me for the next time, second time, what will be saying? Eh, sir, aru ahil. Sir has again come. You are using the word again, why? Because you can remember that I came earlier also. Right? Are you getting what I am saying? Again you are using because you can remember that the sir has already come in during the morning time. 
why I'm emphasizing on this point? See, the poet has already tried to put away the thought. Can you remember the teacup? Put away the thought, putting away. But I told you, it's not elimination. It's not total elimination. The teacup is somewhere there. Similarly, she was just displacing the thought away. The thought was still there somewhere in her brain. She can remember, oh, earlier also I realized the same thing about mother's death, the about mother, the pale look of the mother. Again I am observing the mother. That means, was she successful in ventilating her entire emotion by looking outside? No, she was unable. It is still there working at the backside of the mind. That means the sense of death is still there as a late motive, not only in the poem, but also in the mind of the poet. Right? Is it too critical? Okay, you can you can go on thinking about this. We can also discuss all these things in our subsequent classes as well. Say so look again at her when the meaning is given at the end. When is colorless? I looked again at her, observing the mother as when pale, pale, no color, right? Colorless, losing the brightness. Almost same kind of, almost similar kind of expressions. As a late winter's moon, this time the comparison is between in the mother and the late winter's moon. Some of you may think, oh, there are two similes. Yes, there are two similes. Earlier, our comparison was between the mother, mother's face and the face of the dead body. That was our comparison. This time, the comparison is between, between the mother as a whole. Look at the word again in the textbook. I looked again at her. That time she was comparing the face only. Have you noticed? This time she is comparing the entire body of the mother with the late winter's moon. I'll, I'll explain moon, late winter's moon later. But for the time being, you shall see that she is saying that the earlier the mother's face was compared to the face of a dead body. This time the whole body of the mother. Are you getting something? Earlier I gave you the example of Rangde Basanti about to understand the reality comprehensively. Now she can look not only the face of the mother, but the entire body of the mother. Just like the entire image of Amir Khan in Rangde Basanti, I used to observe, I could observe after, the, after 15 minutes of the movie. So in order to, and now she is getting the full reality of the mother's condition. That means full reality of the mother's imminent death. And therefore, that time comparison was between many people. I can, I can guarantee you, many people will ignore this particular fact. But this is a movement of the movement in the poem also. In the earlier part of the poem, we were only st we are, we are stuck with the mother's face. This time, we are going to the entire body of the mother. So, entire body is going to turn into the dead body of the particular person late winter's moon. So that means from the partial observation of the mother, we have gone to the full observation on the mother. The mother is now physically away from the daughter. Right? So this is also, as I have already said, to, already told you, there is also a movement in the poem. If someone asks you what is the movement in the poem, movement is from the partial observation of the mother to the full observation of the mother. So now, from the thematic point of view, the poet has already crossed the, already, cro already uh, completed the security check part in the airport and now they are away from each other. The poet is writing almost the same kind of thing and felt that old familiar ache Earlier it was realized, this time it is ache, this time it is felt, almost same kind of meaning, realization and feeling. But look at the noun, earlier it was realized with pain, with pain, this time realized the old familiar ache, 
old is old, everybody knows it's not very new. That means some new, some old, deep-rooted kind of despondence, kind of pain must be there in the mind of the poet regarding the condition of the mother, regarding their relationship, maybe regarding the complex subtleties of their relationship. What kind of complexity, what kind of subtlety? Let us try to understand that. Earlier it was pain, right? And this time it is ache. Ache is something physical also, not simply mental. Pain can be mental only, but ache is mental plus physical. Because the pain has been there in the mind of the poet for a long time. And because of that reason, it has become an ache, number one. Number two, it has become familiar. And number three, it has become old for her. Old, familiar ache, the mother, about the mother, she is feeling. What kind of old, we may be confused at this point of time. That next part clarifies the ideas for us. My childhood's fear. That means there must be some fear during the poet's childhood regarding the mother. What kind of fear it can be? Okay, so I can refer to one particular concept. If possible, try to read this particular thing somewhere in your life, sometime in your life, and that is the concept of mirror stage. Mirror stage as postulated, as postulated by the psychologist called Laka. Mirror stays as postulated by Laka. So, how it is connected with this poem? Maybe not knowingly, but unknowingly it is connected to the poem, or you can connect it somehow. Uh, see, uh, when a particular, when a child, when a baby is in the mother's womb, at that point of time, during those, during that particular stage, the child is usually connected with the mother through the umbilical cord. And when the, when the child, when the baby is born into the world, that umbilical cord is normally cut by the doctor. But psychologically, the baby doesn't get detached from the mother, physically detached, but psychologically she is still attached with the mother. And it is normally said by most of the people, and it's also been established by Mirror Laka's Mirror Stage also, that only towards the end of fifth month of the baby, the baby can identify itself to be a different body from the mother. Till that point, the child considers itself to be a part of the mother, bodily part of the mother. But six months, it's consist, it, it started realizing, looking at the mirror, oh, this is me, away from the mother. So now that separation comes during the, during the mirror stage. The individuality grows. And this, this separation from the mother has a kind of deep-rooted psychological inadequacy in the mind of the child. And that creates the fear in the mind of the child when it grows up, when it becomes a kid. And therefore, perhaps, we have a number of examples of kids sitting near the bathroom when the mother is inside the bathroom. Because always feeling that the, as if the mother is going to go away from her, go away from, the, away from it. So that constant fear is there. So you can write down on your notebook that here the familiar ache Ache is the ache of knowing that the mother's death is imminent. What kind of ache? Ache is the ache of knowing mother's death to be imminent. And childhood's fear? Fear is the fear of gradual physical separation from the mother. Gradual physical separation from the mother. The poet was unsuccessful in overcoming her sadness. 
in both the cases. Earlier when looking outside also and this time also she was unable to control her, unable to put away the thought fully. She was actually emotional, actually sentimental. She was about to cry, she was about to shed tears. But can she do that? in front of the mother, that mother who has come to see her off at the airport, can, the, can she do that? Not probably. This is very common human condition for us, all of us. But we, also, we also feel emotional, sentimental at some time, especially at the time of farewell. Right? You can have a look at a very interesting story by Leo Tolstoy what men live by. In that story also, the angel who used to come here onto the ground, onto the earth, used to, beat, used to go away from the world. And that's a moment of separation at that point of, in Tolstoy's story also. Here also this farewell is there, and during the moment of farewell, the daughter cannot be so expressive in terms of her emotion. What she is doing? So it's very much emotional at that point of time. But all I, all I said was, see you soon, Amma. Right? There are so many things to express in front of the mother, sentimentally. Can she do that? No. So maximum thing she has said, she has said, see you soon, Amma. See you soon, Amma. Please read this particular sentence, if possible, thrice or for four times. See you soon, Amma. This you, by the time the poet comes for the next visit from Singapore, that you will turn into the dead body of the you. You will turn into the dead body of the you. And can she come back soon? Impossible. She cannot come back soon, because she, uh, she is going abroad at the time of during 1980s. Not very common, common, not very easy for anyone to, to, to cross over the countries so frequently. Impossible. So this entire statement, see you soon, Amma, is actually a futile statement, meaningless. The poet was about to cry. The poet was about to show the ang soda. Sadness. What was about to hug the mother for the next second time, for, for uh, hug the mother emotionally, embrace the mother emotionally. But can she do that? No. So all I did was smile and smile and smile. And note that after the smile, we have three dots in the textbook. Three dots. No full stop. That means the smile continues. And smile is a positive word for us. If you are happy, you are smiling. But does it signify happiness here? No. So we, we can give a comment in the poem. That in the poem ends with a positive word smile. But the, but the poem ends on a negative note. There is the note of some lurking death. So this is a very, very subtle kind of emotion being handled by the poet in a very subtle manner smile and smile and is the smile original no the smile is mechanical smile springing out of the mechanical relationship with e even if even in the mother daughter relationship in the entire poem there is no full stop so the smile continues smile continues just as a kind of formality to be observed during a time of farewell and that is observed by the poet Kamladas for the mother Balamani who is already 66 at any point of time she may die. So this is technically the end of the poem but even till the end of the poem nobody can find even a single full stop in the entire poem. There is no full stop at all in the entire poem. I really took time, I really took pains to discover the reason between, reason behind 
this absence of full stop or absence of full stop in the poem. The reason may be, to if I simply put it, emotion cannot be grammatical. Right? Emotion cannot be grammatical. And, and it cannot be punctuated by full stop or by semicolon. And that means the entire poem is a emotion interposed with different movements, different thematic movements as demanded by the demanded by the narrative structure of the poem. Right? So this is the way the poem ends. And in the, in the midway of our conversation, we have somehow missed, the, missed to explain the idea of late winter's moon somehow. Let us come back to that for, uh, for next one, or one minute. Late winter's moon is the concept is this, during winter, there is normally the fog in the atmosphere. So it's the foggy, plus the burning fires are there. 